at Pensacola, Florida. Some reach back centuries. Others, such as the tradition of naval aviation, are relatively young, if not quite 60 years of age. One tradition is particularly significant at Pensacola's Naval Air Station. It's a tradition known as the Blue Angels. Fantastic aerial ballet, precision maneuvers executed with quick and easy grace. A melding of aviators' skills and the performance of high-speed jet aircraft. This is how the Blue Angels tradition is seen from the sky. Like many traditions, it started with a mission. The year was 1946. As representatives of the United States Navy, the newly formed flight demonstration team was directed to demonstrate the tactical techniques of naval aviation. Their role was to augment the Navy's recruiting programs by stimulating interest in the United States Navy. Thus, they could aid in the procurement of naval aviators and aviation personnel and promote morale in the naval service. To date, a hundred million people have witnessed their demonstration and know the team affectionately as the Blue Angels. On the ground, the Blue Angels tradition is seen as a closely knit team of 10 officers and 90 enlisted men, all regular career Navy. For each team member, this tour of duty is a two-year investment, helping to build and maintain the Blues tradition. It's hard work being a Blue, for the pilots practice every day, practice, and more practice. For the maintenance crews, it's a constant cycle of preparation, practice, and preparation. This game has two names. This is where both are accomplished. Naval Air Station Pensacola, home of the Blue Angels. The care and feeding of modern supersonic jet fighters is a full-time job. To the crews who maintain the Blue Angels aircraft, preparation is a goal of peak performance at all times. And tradition calls for this task to be done by the finest technicians found in the Navy. The Blues team has all the required service ratings and job descriptions, plus the caliber of skill expected of men carefully selected from a long list of volunteers. The fierce pride of achievement felt by the Blues is reflected in the unique decor of their home base environment. Blue Angel, Lieutenant Russell. This is also a place for hard work. And these offices are carried out all the routine tasks of naval unit administration, plus special tasks imposed by the team's special mission. At certain moments in time here at Pensacola, the end results of practice and preparation come closer to fulfillment. All elements of the Blue Angel team are mustered, men and machines. They are leaving home base for a flight demonstration. It happens about 80 times per year. A hundred different pilots have sat in briefing sessions like this one since the Blues were formed. Each is a regular Navy or Marine officer, 26 to 36 years of age, and a highly qualified jet pilot. Each has undergone an exhaustive selection process to become a Blue Angel. Together, they contribute a wealth of special experience to the Blue Angel tradition. There is flight instructor experience here, duty at Naval Advanced Jet Flight Schools, where they helped write the book on precision maneuvers. There is also combat experience here, carry operations with the fleet in Southeast Asia, interdiction and strike missions over Vietnam's jungles. And to all these former duty assignments, they will return when their Blue Angels tour is over. Right now, the briefing is for a peaceful mission. So, we're going to have to take a good look at the field when we get there. Make a standard watch down and uh, be a far side takeoff. And gentlemen. This is a typical showcase for the Blue Angels flight demonstration. It could be a small airfield in rural America, a military base, or one of the free world's major international jet airports. 
Despite the holiday atmosphere, this is tradition on display. Those of you in the front rows can see the military manner in which our six demonstration pilots have walked down and are approaching their assigned aircraft and have been saluted by their respective plane captains and first mechanics. In a few moments after a conference with the maintenance personnel, the pilots will man up these F-4Js to begin today's flight demonstration. All six pilots have manned up their aircraft now. Their crew chiefs are assisting and staffing the men to these F-4J Phantom Jets. Very shortly, our Blue Angel ground crew will begin starting a small auxiliary power unit that will in turn start our Phantom. Watch as pilots and ground crew team up to check all the very important components of these Phantoms before they give the final thumbs up and taxi out to begin the flight demonstration. Down the runway from the right for the diamond takeoff. Farley solo the pilot as he runs his engine to full power. Now at 170 miles an hour, pulls the nose of his aircraft into the air, and with a gear and flap still extended, rolls his aircraft. 360 degrees with the gear and flaps down. A very spectacular dirty roll on takeoff. Going to number six. Great gear and flaps without allowing the aircraft to fly. Seek slowly to on the runway. Now pulling back on the six, climbing straight up. Allowing those two general electric J79 engines to power these aircraft to drive his F4J straight up now as he performs the Elmer on takeoff. miles an hour of closure as they come in now from the right and from the left. The highest aircraft 50 feet in the air, the other 308 them now for the Diamond Cross. The Blue Angel pilots are justly proud of the formation they fly. It's considered the tightest of any flight demonstration team in the world. Complete wing overlap with only 36 inches separating the wingtips from the canopy. The Diamond formation. Off to the right now, about a half mile. See if you can see what's unusual about this diamond formation. As Commander Wheat brings him across the field from the right, the Farvel formation. The leader, Commander Bill Wheat, is upside down. From the left, 400 degrees per second, horizontal roll. Back in the basic diamond formation, complete wing overlap, only inches. Wink at the canopy now as Commander Wheat brings him in for the very beautiful diamond roll. From the right, from the left, the night vision pass. Back to the basic diamond now, climbing straight up, in over the top in the diamond loop. Two solo 
field now. Joint with the diamond off on the right now, the six aircraft Delta. Maintaining tight formation, still complete wing overlap, still only inches separating the wingtips from the canopies now. The Delta roll. Back now from the left, the same Delta this time at nearly 500 miles an hour. Miranda Week drives the formation nearly straight up. Up onto their backs now. It's once again ending the diamond loop. Miranda Week close to the formation over the top. The pilot's in zero G as he rounds out the maneuver, making the radius at the top the same diameter as the radius at the bottom. Now, on comes the pole as they dive straight for the ground. All six aircraft flying as though they were welded together in one tight formation. Watch very carefully halfway through the maneuver as they call for a formation change. Very smooth transition from box diamond formation at the top of this loop. Solo pile returns now from the right, climbing his aircraft nearly straight up. Rolling it once, twice, three times now as he's still climbing, still rolling. From the right now with his aircraft upside down, lead solo pile. He does the outside one half Cuban eight. I'm over the week all of living. From the left now, a five aircraft manda formation as they come in now for the Florida Lake. I think we've shown you all here today that these McDonnell Douglas F4 J's handled very well at the high speed we've seen so far. These aircraft flown by thousands of Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force pilots is one of the most successful fighter aircraft in the free world today. From the right now, the Blue Angel Delta flew. demonstration is over. The Blues land as they have performed in tight formation. A performance seldom equaled, never surpassed. Thank you. 